Hey, what is up guys? Marone Hardware is here, and thank you so much for checking out my channel. Today for my first official video, I just wanted to give you guys a little story about what I originally planned for you. It's tremendously embarrassing, but I still feel like sharing it. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. I want to start out with some backstory. I'm very much into looking for older, office-oriented PC builds that have long lived their intended span of use. I enjoy taking the time to appreciate how far we've come with personal computers in general. I also enjoy admiring the massive jumble of cables and cobwebs tangled about the inside of each old system that I come across. When I got the PC and monitor combo, which the display was old as dust so I ended up just tossing that out, and began to look at it, I was already at a disadvantage. No manufacturer sticker, no VGA cable for video output, or PSU plug. But hey, $10 PC, right? <laughs> I had extra parts to stick into the system that were missing before. But after looking through the BIOS some, I figured out the specs. The PC had an Athlon XP 1500 Plus running at 1.33 GHz, 1.5 gigs of DDR RAM clocked at a rather measly 300 MHz, a 60 gig PATA hard drive, and a 340 watt OEM style power supply. To be honest, I was surprised at how well all these parts work together with simple Windows XP applications. Navigations of menus were quick enough, and applications initialized and closed at a lot quicker than I initially intended. However, there was a ton of crash and blue screens complaining about a memory management error and such, so I knew the memory sticks were either arranged incorrectly, defective, or just outright unusable. As for the GPU that sat clumsily inside the case, this was one piece I couldn't figure out right off the bat. To be quite frank, I had no idea what the heck I was looking at, just sticking out of the Times 8 AGP slot. Uh, AGP. I'll talk a little more about that in a bit, but the GPU honestly looked like a large network card with a heatsink on it. What it actually was, was an ATI Radeon 7000 32M DDR TVO graphics card, a card in ATI's Sapphire line of GPUs. As of seeing the NVIDIA Enforce 2 MCP soldered into the I hope board wasn't bad enough. Let's take a look at the actual hardware. The Radeon 7032M has exactly what you would expect from the name. Having a very minuscule 32 megabytes of onboard graphical memory is going to be a huge limiting factor in any future test I'll be doing on this card. The Radeon 7000 has a core clock of 133 MHz, a memory clock of 266 MHz, and a maximum output resolution of 2048 by 1536 with a 24-bit color span. Not that any modern or even AAA title game will run at this resolution, or at all for that matter, it's still an option through the VGA port. The more I researched and looked at this card though, the faster I came to realize why I hadn't heard of this GPU, and why no one should still have one of these for anything other than as a nostalgia keepsake. Sadly, as the card seemed to function properly, the rest of the system was in disarray. I found a lot of scuff marks on the motherboard surface, and also noticed that the Athlon chip was missing its heatsink altogether. Unfortunately, I didn't have any spare parts to remedy the situation, so I salvaged what parts I could and scraped the motherboard and remaining components. Now, here comes the disappointing part. I really wanted to test this card out to see what you could do with only 32 megabytes of usable onboard memory for the GPU. But the only problem was I didn't have a system on hand that had an AGP slot in it at all. Before I realized this, I stupidly thought to myself, hmm, I have a spare HP Compact system I could try this out on. Yeah. I'm sure any tech-savvy person out there watching this video <laughs> has already double face palmed themselves by now. I'm sorry, but I wasn't thinking straight at the time. At least you can now revel in the satisfaction of knowing that I spent a good 10 minutes or so trying to get the darn thing to fit inside the chassis. I tried all the PCI lanes until I finally smartened up and realized that this was, in fact, an AGP-only graphics card. I probably spent a good five hours preparing for tests, including things like Final Reality, games like TF2 and Call of Duty 2, and so on. No, but in all seriousness though, I still do want to test this little bug out for myself in the near future. In saying this, I'll go ahead and start gathering parts for an AGP-compatible build, or get one pre-built just for the sake of testing. Beyond that, I and any other person with a brain will have no need for a card like this. As I just got done saying, this is still a card that I'd like to take a more in-depth look at later on when I get my hands on a system that is able to take a card like this. For further note, the Radeon 7032M was released in 2003 with an original MSRP of $129. It requires no PSU pin connectors to function, and even at its time was considered a lackluster choice for gamers who expected great performance. So, with that in mind, I'll continue to look into systems that I can test this cheap and underappreciated GPU on. I'll be giving it the benefit of the doubt here, but we shall see what is to be found soon enough. And that'll be about it for my first video, guys, and thank you so much for sharing your time with me. 
I want to especially thank my first six subscribers. It means a lot to me at the end of the day. We're only getting started, so get buckled up and enjoy the ride along the way. Anyway, guys, this has been the Radeon 7032M intro. I'm Ron Hardwares, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.